A look inside Apple's $5 billion headquarters. So it may seem like a UFO or some recently discovered Martian settlement, but it is, in fact, a campus that is entirely dedicated to Apple. It's known as the Apple Park, the spaceship, or the ring, and costs an eye-watering $5 billion to complete in 2017. Because of its unique shape, the entire building is cooled down by natural airflow. It also has massive, four-story tall glass doors that have powerful mechanisms that open them. There are solar farms on all of the roofs that power most of the facility and hidden underground tunnels that allow employees to move around the Apple mothership with ease. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the final project Steve Jobs worked on, which turned out to be the most passionate one of his career. Before we take a more in-depth look, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way, you will never miss one of our future tech-related videos. The Campus The campus, that has room for 15,000 employees, was designed to separate the inside and outside of the complex, ultimately creating its own little closed-off community. When Steve Jobs came up with the idea of the Apple Park in early 2011, he wanted to make history. It was envisioned as a hub of innovation that had a unique open concept with plenty of communal outdoor working spaces. Jobs wanted to create a calming, collaborative space where all the workers could take a relaxing stroll through nature to clear their minds or solve problems. I mean, if Apple Park was around when the iPhone 6 was released, we may never have had the infamous Bengate fiasco. Jobs first pitched the idea to the Cupertino City Council back in California in 2011, which he eventually got permission. At the time, Apple employees were spread across 100 different buildings, which made it difficult to collaborate on certain projects. His vision was to bring all of the company's best and brightest into one complex so that he could combine natural sustainability and technological advancement in one place. The construction. To start, Apple bought an industrial park in Cupertino about an hour away from San Francisco, although it was mainly covered in asphalt. To get the ball rolling on development, Jobs met with the prize-winning architect Norman Foster, whose commissions have included the Hong Kong Airport and London's Gherkin Tower, which I think we can all admit is one of the greatest building names in existence. Foster was originally given a $500 million budget for the project, but soon discovered that it would cost billions to accomplish the dream of Steve Jobs, who was now getting extremely ill with pancreatic cancer. It's a good thing that Apple had the money to spare within their $2 trillion empire, else the end product wouldn't have been nearly as impressive. Whoever did the budget calculations that day must have gotten into a lot of trouble. He should have used one of Wozniak's handmade calculators from 1976. Even that would have been more accurate. Sadly, Steve Jobs didn't live to see the finished product as he passed away in October 2011. Despite this, most of the ideas he had for the Apple Park had already been implemented, which meant that the team could carry on working without him at the helm anymore. Apple's headquarters covers about 2.8 million square feet, with its most prominent building being a gigantic ring that surrounds the entire campus. To get to the campus buildings, you have to drive through a 755-foot underground tunnel that has brilliantly white-tiled walls. Once at the end of the passage, employees can park in one of the 3,000 parking spaces, or alternatively choose one of the 6,000 spaces up top. Of course, that does leave 6,000 of the 15,000 employees without a space, but I'm sure even Apple has a carpool system. The park also comes with 1,000 bicycles for employees to use to move around the spacious campus and park area. Other aspects implemented to encourage employees to stay healthy is the state-of-the-art wellness center and basketball courts. The health and wellness complex includes a two-story yoga studio, physical therapy studio, and laundry facilities for employees who work up a sweat. The campus also offers employees access to medical and dental services right on the site, which means you can easily nip out for a quick filling or check up on your lunch break. I don't know about you, but I know where I'm going if there's ever a zombie apocalypse. 
The wellness center alone cost almost $17 million to construct, but to Jobs, it was worth every penny as it meant that the hardworking Apple employees had a place to rest their body and minds. More than a cafeteria. Dinner time is one of the biggest priorities at the Apple headquarters, as it should be at any good campus. The park has seven cafes with the largest spread across three levels. The large cafe has balconies for people to eat on as well as large sliding glass doors that extend the entire four stories of the building. With the help of the powerful underground motors, these can be opened completely on nice days to let in some fresh air. This main eating area has the capacity to feed all 15,000 people every single lunchtime. Rumor has it that Apple employees are fueled by their prized pizza. And who would blame them? Pizza is the food of gods. They love their pizza so much, in fact, that they have even patented their very own pizza box that lets air and moisture escape so the crust doesn't get soggy. This is why Apple is one of the best tech companies in the entire world. They can even perfect pizza. Jobs' vision for the campus Steve Jobs insisted on a lot of glass and natural light for Apple Park. Though he never got to see it, his dream was realized as the building features the largest curved glass panes in the entire world that tower at 45 feet tall. Glass can also be found throughout the complex and is shown off well in the Steve Jobs Theater building that houses the world's largest carbon fiber roof as well as the world's tallest freestanding glass elevator. The lobby of the theater cost around $12 million to make, but it was Jobs' wish that the auditorium was the jewel of the Apple campus. When Steve Jobs came up with the idea for the Apple headquarters, he wanted nature to play a huge part in the project. To do this, he made sure that it included sustainable and eco-friendly ways to generate and use energy. One way they're doing this is by harvesting energy from the rooftop solar farms that generate 75% of the campus's power. They also have biofuel cells that help power the rest of the campus and let it feel like a real national park. To add to the forest aesthetic, Apple has also planted 9,000 trees that are drought resistant during the warmer months. Jobs was passionate about the new campus featuring indigenous flowers that included fruit trees from local orchards. The reason for this addition was inspired by Jobs' childhood growing up in Northern California. Wood is a theme that runs throughout the Apple company. The headquarters is no different. Every piece of wood on the campus is a custom timber veneer made from recycled wood. The Apple Park only uses natural airflow, which eliminates the need for any air conditioning systems. This is done by the ring that inhales the air through the underside of the canopies. From there, several shafts act like chimneys to suck in the warm air and blast it outside. Visitors welcome to visit. Unfortunately, non-employees are not allowed to visit the ring itself because it is only reserved for Apple workers and their important guests. For those curious about how it feels to be in the Apple Park, you can go to the visitor center right outside the headquarters and take a good look around. It has an augmented reality area where people can tour the park using Apple products and another cafe for those who get hungry. The Visitor Center cost approximately $110 million, but since it attracts fans of Apple products, it seems that the high price tag was worth it. Disaster Proof The complex was designed to be resistant to natural disasters like hurricanes, floods, and earthquakes to protect their pricey investment. The ring also has underground base isolation, which stabilizes the structure by allowing the building to move up to 4.5 feet in any direction without compromising its strength. Do you think this kind of construction should be compulsory in any new buildings, especially in places prone to earthquakes? We'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now that the final dream of Steve Jobs has been achieved, the next step is for the headquarters to inspire other offices and huge corporations to follow suit and create a workplace that promotes healthy living for not only their employees, but for the planet also. If you enjoyed learning about the new Apple HQ and would like to watch more content on the latest Apple news, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Also, don't forget to show your support by liking this video. Thanks for watching.